Learn the most advanced recruiting techniques. Land the most desirable talent. Launch your company towards massive success. This is the Higher Power Radio Show with Rick Gerard. The remote workforce has proven to be challenging for a lot of companies who have traditionally run operations from a centralized location. Aside from the technical issues, i.e. security and connectivity, productivity, engagement, and mental health become more difficult to manage. So today we're going to take a dive into how we can utilize policies, tools, and data to create a more engaged remote workplace. I'm Rick Gerard, and welcome to the Higher Power Radio Show. Um, we help entrepreneurs and hiring managers avoid costly hiring mistakes by identifying a specific problem and providing proven solutions to enable your company to win the right hire. We share insights from top performing rebel entrepreneurs, disruptors, and industry experts like our guest today, Sharon Yaroslavsky. She is the co-founder and CEO of Cassiopeia Tech. A uh, Cassiopeia Tech is a startup that empowers managers that lead fully or partially remote teams to maximize workplace experience. Their solution delivers actionable insights to boost team collaboration, belonging, and mental health by analyzing communication patterns, not content, within, within and among teams. Sharana is also an expert in all things related to data-driven pro data products <laughs> and people analytics mm -hmm. and was featured in Forbes 2019 30 Under 30 list, which is what makes Sharon the perfect expert for today's topic. Sharon, welcome to the Higher Power Radio Show. Thank you. Thank you, for, Rick, for having me. It's great to be Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm happy to have you. I'm excited to share this content with our audience. So today we're going to be discussing the problems of managing a remote workforce and providing some directions on how to fix it. Sound good to you? Yeah, amazing. Perfect. Let's do it. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to plug into your expertise here. What are the challenges that companies are facing today? Well, Rick, according to our data, 77% of managers feel it's harder for them to manage their team remotely. And yeah, there is a good reason why they feel that way because remote work just create uh, a new set of challenges and difficulties. Uh, so managers don't have the visibility they used to have while working in the office. Uh, they don't see people, you know, interacting, engaging in the hallways. They don't have this uh, water cooler talks and small chats, uh, grabbing coffee together. Um, and also creating a sense of belonging becomes more difficult. So uh, more than a third of employees um, actually indicate that their sense of belonging was affected due to the shift to remote work. So there is new needs uh, that uh, employees need. There is new needs for managers that are also uh, leading remote teams. So what we see is that um, employees needs more empathy these days because of the fear and uncertainty uh, employees would like their managers to be more empathetic to their challenges at home and improve their work experience um, also uh, employees need their uh, managers to lead with more open approach and transparency be more sensitive to their needs and how the team interact yeah you know what that Going back to what you said, which was, you know, the sense of belonging thing, I, we're kind of tribal and, and social beings, right? So we need to be around other people. And there's been a lot of talk of this is the new norm work from home. Do you yeah. see that? I know we're going a little off script here, but do you really see that as I cannot stand working from home personally? <laughs> it drives me nuts. And I, I need to be around people um, to, to give and both feed off the energy, right? So I would imagine that I mean, do you see this really being the new norm? Do you really see this as being what we're going to have to deal with moving forward? Yeah, it's a great question. So I can also mention that GitLab um, just published uh, a remote work report. And according to their data, 86% of respondents believe remote work is the future. Um, and sure. I'm talking a lot with uh, executives and also with the HR experts uh, here in the States. And it's something that is very clear, I think, for all of them is that also after, um, you know, uh, the COVID-19 outbreak will be over, the new normal will be here, um, still remote work will be much more popular. Um, the new generation also 
want this kind of flexibility and the advantages of remote work. So I definitely believe that remote work is here to stay. Well, I agree. And you know what? What's interesting is like it also opens up the ability to work while you're traveling. So, I mean, you can go on a vacation or, you know, God, hopefully they get satellite communications going to work from a boat somewhere in the middle of the Pacific, I mean, and still get work done, right? Yeah, it, that's going to be really amazing. Right. All right. That's, that's the only thing that's really like got me excited. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm thinking, oh, God, we should go start looking at sailboats. So, all right. So. Why is this? Um, why is this important? Why is it important that we um, we become more empathetic? That we really kind of recognize this and and um, you know why is it important to companies right now? Yeah. So as as you mentioned, also Rick, uh, I think uh, remote work is here to stay. Um, and what's happening is that managers just need to constantly assess the team polls these days. Uh, the world is, is just changing really fast. Also as a startup and company, there's uh, also uh, new challenges all the time. Uh, there is new atmosphere, new new problems to solve. And, and managers just need to have this ability to, to assess their team polls and what they need and to be very, um, very responsive to the team needs. Uh, and in order to do that, uh, managers just need to, to have an, new skills and tools that will help them to adapt to the new environment. So this is a great opportunity for managers to really um, develop their people skills to a much stronger level because you're trying to assess people or have conversations with people via video conference as mm -hmm. opposed to like, you know, over yeah. coffee. Definitely. Okay. See, I, you know, so that's going to require that we as managers look at things from a different lens. We're going to have to evolve. You cannot be the same manager that you were, right? Yeah. Definitely. I, I can share that um, recently I interviewed uh, Amy Capalenti Wolf, uh, the former SVP of uh, Simantech. Um, and um, she, she and I talked a lot about the new leader and how it's looked like. Uh, and um, today the new leader is more about empathy. It's still about driving for results, but in a more collaborative way. Uh, much more listening, a lot more uh, guiding rather than directing. The new leader also needs to be more flexible and innovative to adapt the new challenges that I mentioned as the world is just changing very fast. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. All right, you're listening to the Higher Power Radio Show. I'm your host, Rick Gerard. And for our podcast listeners, we're going to take a quick educational moment from our sponsors. Our guest today is Sharon Yaroslavsky. She's the co-founder and CEO of Cassiopeia Tech, and we're discussing remote workforce management. So how you can get the most out of your, your leadership team and your employees during this new norm, right? So let's talk about what needs to happen for a company to be successful running a remote workforce. So what would be the three main areas in which companies really need to be aware of that they they can focus on on and then let's break down those areas into you know each uh, component of those a little bit deeper into like what they need to do in those areas sure um so definitely what how i see it is that there are three main domains that companies should adjust in order to uh, be successful in managing remote team uh, the first one is just to establish remote work policies and culture that are suitable for remote work. Uh, this is the first one. The second one, which we also mentioned before, is training. Um, so this is the second. And lastly, is the tools. The tools that managers need these days to be more success successful in leading both partially or fully remote teams. Um, and I can deep drive um, just, you know, on each and every one of them. So the first one is uh, establish remote work policies and culture that are suitable for remote work. And there are three things we need to pay attention to. Uh, the first one is rules. So we need to, to establish new rules for gaining clarity uh, while we work. So questions like, um, will we pay people for overtime if they work off hours or uh, how do we manage security and password? So all these small stuff, but we need them in order to, to keep clarity. Uh, the and second those need one, to be written down, right? Sorry? You, you need to actually have those documented and you need to like share those with your employees. You can't just say, these are our new rules 
you have to physically write those down and, and make sure that everybody knows what they are. Definitely. You need to, to write it down. You need it to be very accessible and, and uh, very clear where to find these kind of rules for all, all employees. Definitely. It's a good Perfect. point. Uh, the second one is uh, norms. So uh, when do we email, text, or message people? Uh, are cameras always on for online meetings? Or in the, how do we run manage, or manage meetings these days uh, from, from remote? Um, so this is the second one. And lastly, is uh, just designing our broader company DNA. So how do we communicate when we aren't satisfied with something? Uh, how can we stay connected while working remotely? This one is really important. So basically, we are just establishing the right culture that will help us to foster trust in our company. Okay. Um, so, so like with those those norms and and designing your company DNA, like where are there challenges specific in those areas that companies should be looking into and like make sure that you're covering these things? Sure, there is a lot of uh, checklists and and guides that also please uh, reach out to me and I can share. Uh, okay. And there's a lot of things that are related to communication and and how we engage uh, within the company, but feel free to reach out and I would love to share it with you. Okay, but the important thing is it's gotta be congruent with what your company is, right? Your, yeah. your DNA okay. of your company and how you run it. Okay, so what's the um, what would be the next part? The next part is training. And as you mentioned, the new leader is uh, need to have these new leadership skills. And, and um, there is a great training that we can help managers to, to gain this, uh, this kind of skills and knowledge that they need to, to lead remote teams. And lastly, the last part is the tools. Um, Wait, so before we get into tools really quickly, um, I, just, I do wanna talk about training. So how does a manager learn empathy <laughs> oh, I think it's it's a it's a you know we can talk about it on, on a full uh, completely separate episode, uh, um, but um, for this podcast. But uh, but I think there is a lot of um, just exposing to to new kind of way of thinking about things and how to be aware and be a better listener how to be uh to to know how to ask the right questions and to be a better listener listener for your employee and to be very responsive to their needs um so yeah it, it's so, a challenge that that for sure <laughs> yeah well because i'm wondering okay so if i'm a manager in an organization and i really want to get better at i mean so I, I should figure out how to learn how to listen like that's really the core of listen and, and recognize things within my, my people. So that like, cause a lot of times if you're a manager, you're the, you're, you're kind of, especially if you're a command and control manager, right? Empathy isn't really part of your DNA and how you manage. So you're going to have to make some major changes in order to do that. For sure. So, yeah. so how do I learn I that? Well, it's, it's a different, there is also uh, different tools and, and skills and kind of practice that you can uh, have in order to improve. Uh, okay. Like everything, it's, it's a muscle. You can, you can yeah. train it and become better at it. Uh, and I think it's also something, what's important here is that managers need to know and be aware how important it is to keep training this muscle and become yes. better. So. Yeah, practice listening, right? It's just like anything. You, you need practice in order to get good at it. Exactly. Michael, Michael Jordan didn't uh, get really good at basketball by just stepping up to the to the to line and throwing free throws. Like he he practiced for hours and hours on it, right? Exactly. All right, so let's talk about tools. So working yeah. remotely has challenges. We've all talked about Zoom, which is a communications tool, but what kind of tools would I need to put in place that would help me as a manager do a better job? Yeah. Um, so this one, this part is really important. Uh, working remotely is not just working from the office only with Zoom. <laughs> so working remotely creates new challenges for leaders. So as I mentioned at the beginning, 77% uh, of managers indicate it's har harder for them to manage their remote teams. Um, yeah. so there is a workplace experience gap that technology can help in closing. Um, so the first kind of category uh, of tools is team insights tools. 
So it's more challenging to use surveys or feedback tools these days because employees are busy and insecure while as a manager, you need a fast real-time insights to act on. So communication shifted to online and people analytics can empower remote managers and just, you know, better leading remote teams. Um, and I can share from, from our experience. So at Casupia, we analyze communication patterns to provide actionable insights to improve collaboration, belonging, and mental health. And the kind of insights we provide uh, to managers is how to improve the work experience for all their employees and how to address their needs. Uh, so for example, I can share that we uh, adding also alerts uh, regarding uh, when meeting time increase in order to help managers to better balance the work day for their employees. Or we are providing also uh, insights about new employees experience, which is really, really challenging these days to onboard new employees. So we help them to really create the best onboarding experience for them also remotely. Uh, so this is the first uh, first part and, and type of, of uh, tools that we can uh, we need to have. Um, the, the second you already mentioned is a communication platform, so Zoom, Slack, um, etc. And then the last one is collaboration tools. So what kind of tools we need to share document, thoughts, goals uh, within the team? So like, for example, like um, we're looking at Google Suite or, or Outlook or, or Exchange or what have you, like anything that basically is a document collaboration platform. Exactly. Dropbox, what have you. Okay, got it. So, um, now, do you look at in the hiring, like the tools in the hiring process? I mean, you know, your your employee experience starts at the interview process, right? So is this something you would carry through from the interview all the way through to onboarding and the tenure of the employee at the organization? So I think definitely we should be very minded um, about the, the employee's experience even from mm -hmm. the hiring, uh, you know, stage. Uh, definitely we should communicate uh, the different, you know, our culture, how, how we engage in the, in the company. Uh, definitely just from the start. And then while we're onboarding, as we mentioned, we need to be aware it's harder to onboard people while working remotely and how we can really get the insights we need to improve this kind of process. Um, so, yeah, I believe we, we should take into consideration all we mentioned here just from the start got it um would you mind sharing the tools that you guys use for like keeping your employees engaged yeah i mean obviously um, you use cassiopeia <laughs> right <laughs> but i mean like from a communication standpoint i mean you know you're you're a startup and you've got you've got employees and you guys all work remote right yeah so like how do you guys and this is really valuable for a lot of our audience because most of them are entrepreneurs. Like, what did you what did you evaluate? What did you plug in? And what's kind of got you guys uh, flowing pretty strongly? Yeah, I feel I think that um, it's different tools for different stages, different needs. Um, we're definitely um, using our technology, but also um, we we love using uh, Zoom. We love Slack. Um, we use uh, uh, Trello, although I used Jira in the past, and I think it's a great tool as well. Um, so I think, but but whatever you know, you need to also map your needs and uh, your manager's needs in order to to pick the right tools for you. Um, and what it, yeah. what is the Team Insight tool that you're using? Is that Cassiopeia? Yeah, we we do okay. use our platform, and we learn a lot of it from yeah. it. And and uh, yeah. <laughs> highly okay. recommend it. <laughs> is there one that you use specifically to get surveys to to get feedback from your employees? Yeah, um, we do use we also have our own survey engine that we use. Okay. Uh, but there is great tools out there. Um, I feel that you know, Coltram, SurveyMonkey, uh, there is great options for surveys, definitely. Perfect. All right, cool. Well, we're just about getting uh, close on time here. Um, what would be two or three key takeaways that you could give the audience so they can plug into their business today? Yeah. Um, 
So I think the first key takeaway is to be aware of um, the workplace experience gap that I mentioned today, that created by the shift to remote work. Um, the second key takeaway is to design the right policies and company culture to allow your company to prosper while working remotely. And lastly, use the right tools to boost your team uh, collaboration, communication, and employee experience. Okay. So you have to be aware of these. I mean, you can't just wing it, guys. It's really important that you have some structure in place. All right. Well, shoot. Sharon, thanks so much for your time investment today. And I want to welcome you to the Higher Power Radio community. Um, what would be the best way in which members of our community could reach you? Well, I'm very responsive on LinkedIn. So feel free to reach out. Just look for Sharon Yaroslavsky or write me an email to Sharon at Cassiopeia.tech. All right. Perfect. And we'll have that linked in the show notes. All right. I want to thank our listening audience for tuning in this week's episode of Higher Power. A quick thanks to our team, our engineer, Christopher Decker, our producers, Andrea Ballin, Ariel Kramer, and Ayla Gerard. A big thanks also to our sponsor, Criteria Corp. If you're listening to the podcast, please subscribe, review, and share. We're listening and we welcome your feedback after all this shows for you. You can join the Higher Power Radio community at Higher, that's H I R E, Power, P O W E R, Radio, R A D I O.com, or you can drop me an email at rickatstridesearch.com. Tune in next week. Our guest is going to be David DeFrancis. He is the CEO of IT Proactive. I'm your host, Rick Gerard, and you have been listening to the Higher Power Radio Show. Aloha. Thank you for listening to Higher Power Radio. Catch our LinkedIn live show every Tuesday at noon or download the podcast on iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, or your favorite podcast platform. We appreciate you joining us on Higher Power Radio with your guide to recruitment success. Rick Gerard. 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 Gerard.